going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Brain Damage, the show where we're only three episodes in and we're already releasing one late. We're talking about our most anticipated film of 2020 and 2021, Halloween Kills. I'm Buddy, black number one, the bruiser. We've got Dig Through the Ditches and Burn Dynamite Jared, and we've got Midnight Miles, the Monster Mash Mandroid. It's Halloween, almost. We're talking about Halloween Kills. What's going on, guys? Here we are. I, uh, Howdy. I survived. Uh, I survived Puerto Rico and made it back to America. So we're into this episode now. Talk about Puerto Rico for a second. Tell us about Puerto Rico. I've never been to Puerto Rico. I've been to Puerto Rico. Bruiser's uh, been to Puerto yeah. Rico, and it, you know, um, I'm I'm surprised you got out of there in one piece, buddy, when you went because there's not a good history of bruisers that go into Puerto Rico. When we went to Puerto Rico, we actually got stranded there for an extra three days. Well, God I forbid, the worst thing ever, extra who's three days a, of the who's honeymoon. Who's Jose Gonzalez? No, Jose Gonzalez is a baseball player, I think. Uh, some Jose or something freaking that was working for uh, Carlos Colon. Are you talking about the story where the one guy got stabbed or whatever? Bruiser Brody! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, got yeah, stabbed yeah, yeah, and yeah, killed. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... It was cool. I mean, I feel like it really wasn't enough time there. I went for a wedding, and it was quick, but... It was in San Juan. I did get to old San Juan, which is a little bit touristy, but it, like the buildings were cool. Walked around some, saw some old fort, you know, that was like right on the ocean that they used to like protect from, you know, like invaders by sea. That was pretty There sick. was a torrential downpour when we went there and we got stranded in that fort for like six hours. They like wouldn't let anyone leave. And we were oh, just like old San Juan? Yeah, we were like literally in the prisons in this fort, like underground. That's the one that's like right on you the tip of the island. Like a fucking hurricane or something or I mean, it's, it wasn't a hurricane. It was just raining a lot. When I first got, when we first got there, we got into the hotel, and you could tell the storm. Like when we were coming from the airport to the hotel, you could tell the storms were uh, like it was, something was brewing, like real big storm, like shit. Got in there about twenty minutes in, it was when it was like blinding fucking downpours. But then two hours later, it was like sun shining fine. So the weather's pretty wild, obviously. I mean, an island, but it was cool. The people were uh, were pretty nice. Made me feel guilty to, that I didn't speak Spanish, though, in some of those situations. But uh, for the most part, it was pretty cool. I'd like the to people back, did? Maybe. The people made you feel guilty? Just any time I go... They're like, like, why would you come to my country and not speak the language? Well, kind of like the white people do here? I just... Uh, <laughs> God. God, yeah. Well, you've never been in, like, the grocery store? Oh, and there's, no, like, a family yeah, speaking Spanish and some white guy is like... It's speak the language if you're going to come here or something some, stupid, I was, you know? I was, getting, I was renewing my license today, and... The guy next to me was... In Puerto Rico? Yeah. I'm, 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 <laughs> surprise, Getting guys. Getting a Puerto Rican driving I'm moving license. to Puerto Rico, bro. We're doing, it, we're doing this international from now on. Uh, it's not international. I was it's a U.S. territory. It's a U.S. territory, but It's still, still a different country. It's still... Yeah. Anyways, okay. It's just a U.S. territory. You, you don't need a... Uh, passport. Passport to get in. This, this woman... This guy next to me spoke really amazing English. I mean, there's no... I, I, no bullshit. And he was from, I don't know, somewhere. And the woman, like, he said one thing with a lip, like, one word with a little bit of, like, an accent on it. And the woman kind of, like, she'd been joking already, but basically, like, mocked him in, like, a racist way. And I was just like, I was just like, bro, really? You're, like, 45, and you have a really shitty lip ring piercing, and you work at the BMV. Trash humor. Like, That's why the BMV like, is the worst place. Oh, Mocha, what's that, boy? Midnight Mocha's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. He's freaking out. He got a little stressed for a minute, boy. Why'd yeah. you get stressed? Should we talk about the Haunted House restaurant for a minute? We can. Talk about so it. I already did a whole episode about it. I, I want to listen to it yet. I will say, if you listen to my first episode about it, the second time it was a lot better than the first time we went. The sam- so. I, I forgot what you said. The sandwich was better the second time around? Well, the first time I got the chicken and waffles, which was fine. Not necessarily the food. I, I feel like the food as a whole was better this time. Um, and just the the fact that it's been open for a little bit longer. Like, there's new um, artwork on the walls. Um, I feel like they have... It was a little less chaotic than it was when we went the first time. It feels like they have more down what they're trying to do there. Um, of course, we were celebrating not only your birthday, but Mazer's birthday. So we got to have the whole like purge thing happen at our table. Um, what was that like for you? It was, it was funny. I could tell you were pissed. <laughs> I wasn't pissed, but it was just funny and unexpected. 
I did say I fucking hate you guys. Like <laughs> as soon as they started coming over. Well, like when they were coming over and doing the dance and shit, I was like, okay, okay. And then like I they totally stopped for- at our table. <laughs> but, like I totally forgot that it was like close to my birthday for some reason. I just wasn't thinking about it. And then like the guy came over the PA and they're like, happy birthday to Maisie and Jared. And I was like, oh fuck you guys. Like <laughs> god damn it. You like the the girl in the scream outfit going crazy? With Not her. as much as fucking Mazer did, man. She was like fucking. And still talking about it to this day. We were at the car dealership earlier. She was telling everybody at the dealership about it. <laughs> my, I, my experience was like fine. It, I, okay, so I don't want to say I don't know. It's not anything bad, but I a little. You know, I had the food and a little bit of hair in it, and that was fine. Oh, I, oh, I can't believe you're bringing this up. It's that was my. You For fuck's what, sake! You're asking what my oh experience my was. God. I still ate it. But for some reason, they forgot I was there, which was fine You didn't me. have to pay. I got a free meal. I, I maybe did, they knew about the hair. May, maybe. I did tip 50% of what my meal was, at least so the tip went to the, hopefully the scream woman, so she can keep that up. But it was fine. Like, <laughs> I, so she could keep her job. <laughs> keep her shit up. But for me, it was probably like how your first experience was. Like For me, the thing was like we I ate at weird times that day, and we actually... Ate right before we went. We actually we had a pre dinner dinner. We had a pre dinner dinner, and by the time I got there, I was like, I couldn't decide at all what I wanted because I wanted something healthy after eating a bunch of fried shit all day, and there wasn't a lot of stuff that was like not fried or a burger even in the vegetarian section, which was fine. But it just like I think I need to go again. I need to go again. I'm sure. telling you, next time we go, you need to financially prepare yourself because you're getting that. Thirty dollar Jaws seafood. I'd be pizza. fine getting that sometime. It wasn't. I just. Like, I couldn't eat. I didn't. That's not what I wanted. Though. I swear to God, this guy has not shut up about this fucking hair in his food since for the weeks. Sec- <laughs> since the second he went. There. I found hair in my food probably ten billion times in my life at restaurants, and never once have I ever thought about it again. Like about five minutes after I fucking pulled it I out of the food. It. I wasn't gonna <laughs> send it back. You're Jesus. still talking. About you it. asked me. You wanted an honest. That wasn't. Those were the things I remember. Hair my food and getting free food and I was fine with that. But we won we won the horror music trivia thing. We got yeah. some coupons and stuff. Um, um Jared had to, oh Jared, talk about what you thought about the restaurant because you said it reminded you of a lot of Japan. It just reminds me of like a really shitty like theme cafe you'd find in Tokyo. <laughs> really shitty. Well, no, be, like, don't ever say I do. I'm bad. I just... no. Listen, I really like it because I like shitty theme cafes. <laughs> like that's that's the thing. Just most people will tell you like uh, in in Japan and like or whatever. Like if like a goddamn. Like, uh, okay, so I went to one. It's it's actually a permanent fixture. Most of the theme cafes in Japan are very, are like temporary they things. Like they're like, pop, they're now, like yeah. pop-up cafes. But I went to the Gundam Cafe in Tokyo in Akihabara. And I mean, like, you know, if you really go in there expecting it to be like the fucking like life-changing experience or whatever, you're, you're probably going to be like a little underwhelmed and disappointed. Me? I fucking love I I was like... God damn, they're playing the Gundam, the the all the different Gundam theme tunes and got the intros rolling on the TVs. I'm you sure go in the bathroom, right. if you turn the lights on, like the lights are like um they're on top of the mirror and they're like uh LEDs like in the shape of like the Gundam eyes. Okay. And so like, they light up like all slow and it makes like the Gundam noises and shit and like it's just like, I mean, that sounds cooler than anything that's at the haunted house. I was going to say, the, I was the, like, honestly, house it sounds house. pretty cool, but the haunted house restaurant was exactly what I thought it was going to be for the most part. Besides, I will say, the food presentation, like, on the plate, like, when you when it comes out, all your guys' food, I think anyone can agree, like, they do a good job of presenting the food to you better than, like, I guess some similar restaurant. Jared, did it turn your shit red? Because I had the same thing I you got. I didn't you didn't know, notice? I didn't notice. It's for science. You didn't check it out? I fucking, I think it did. But I can't. Next time I go, I'm getting the Slimer, which is the green waffles, just for the the experimentation. See, I'm never gonna get the waffles there again because I thought the waffles were they were weak. pretty bland. Like I thought the waffles. The were chicken like, was good. I, think, I thought that the waffles were kind of dry and like when and like you say like the get the extra sauce or whatever. The chicken, the chicken was fine. the The whole sandwich as a whole, like presentation, yeah, it looked great coming out. It was a fucking bitch to eat. Like oh, once, like really like, hard, yeah. You know, like so. But it was a little. It was a little on the dry side. 
you know, I, I hate to say it, but um, I want to switch to what you got. The chicken sandwich, which was slathered in sauce. Well, it's it's just, still, it still wasn't that hot. Swimming in sauce. They, they need to work on the heat, because even when the hot chicken sandwich had all the sauce on it, it still wasn't to my yeah, talk to expectation. The chef, to expectation. The chef. Yeah, listen, yeah. brother, if you're going to put hot on the thing... Then you gotta make it hot. I I fucking hate that. The whole well, the haunted what the haunted you, sauce whatever it's called. What are you scared of? Like what are what are, are what are people scared of? It's gonna be too spicy for someone. Fuck off! Listen, you put hot on the menu. It's in the haunted hot sauce or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Like it's supposed to be spicy. Anyone that's ordering this, man, they want it to be fucking spicy. So add a little bit more kick to that fucking thing. I'm not saying go level 10 heat, but let me feel it, man. Make it at least hot as hot as uh, Frank's Red Hot. Yeah. But we will be back sometime because we have two 15% off coupons because we won. Maybe I'll bring some Frank's two, with me. Two of the things. You think Frank's, so. Frank's will mix well with the haunted sauce, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. Frank's mixes with everything. You can literally You can just, put it on anything. You can seriously put Frank's in like a goddamn, like... That marinara you had, we just had pizza. The marinara you just busted out, you could literally fucking dump Frank's into that and then shake it, and it would taste good. I guarantee it would taste. It would, might taste like a little, little like different, but it would like you won't be like, fuck, what happened? You'd be like, man, that's that's kind of good. It's kind of good. Yeah. I like Frank's and everything too. You have to. You're vegetarian, man, or well, pescatarian, but like, yeah. I feel like if I ever stopped eating meat, like, I mean, I already do. Basically, I'm. Like I already do this, basically. Anyways, not not eat meat, but put hot sauce on everything. It's like goddamn. Like if I'm gonna fucking eat like a, I don't know what the fuck you eat. Like some, some <laughs> anything, fuck, whatever. What do people eat these days? I don't know. Like a veggie burger, man. You throw some fucking some franks sauce. on that motherfucker. I throw barbecue sauce. Like I like different. Well, okay, check sauces. it out. If you're ever cooking tofu, okay, you just got a block of tofu and you want to try and season that up. You got to throw some franks in there, right? I throw, I'll do I'll do bar I do a lot of barbecue sauce or like teriyakis or things like that. But Frank's too. Frank's is like Frank's uh, like when I put a veggie burger together. If we're really talking about it, I'll throw like maybe like you know some mayo, maybe some. Or I'll do like mayo, a little bit of barbecue, and maybe even some fucking hot sauce on top of that. Frank's I get saucy. Frank's is the best out of the mainstream hot sauces. We can all agree. Tabasco's yeah. fucking trash. And then like tapatio and I stuff could, like that. It's let me, mid. Let me but tell Frank's you, is where it's uh, at. All right, top let me say this. Pizza night. I, just, I like. I mean, I like top tier. I'm not saying I like it more. Than I'll Frank's, say this. But. Okay, Frank's is the best. Frank's is the best out of the mainstream big big name hot sauce. Have you had that Trader Joe's hot sauce that we get here sometimes? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> but Tabasco sucks. It's too watery. But I will eat Tabasco if that's what they have. What about what's the other one? The one, it's not as big, but like Sriracha Texas Pete. Sir, I like Texas Pete a lot. Texas actually, Pete's that's probably good. my that's Texas probably my Pete's number two. Slap. Texas, that's Texas my number Pete's two. Good. Yeah. Listen, yo, um, the generic yellow label Louisiana hot sauce. That shit goes. That in. goes. Yeah, actually, that, that shit goes, goes in. in. That goes in. Um, and the goddamn yeah, Texas Pete is good. Um, yeah, that's, I mean that's oh oh uh, sweet baby Ray's. Their, I've never had their hot sauce. Oh, hot their sauce is their good. buffalo okay. sauce is like a creamy buffalo. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah buffalo, it's super they, good. they just call it buffalo wing sauce. They had yeah, it's buffalo wing sauce, and then they I don't ever get this one, but there's three different kinds of buffalo sauce for sweet baby rays. I've only had the like the hot buffalo and the and the normal buffalo. They also make one that's even creamier, that's like a creamy buffalo sauce that they do. do they make a buffalo blue cheese sauce maybe too. Maybe. I you know, this is like a uh, sauce company. They do all kinds of shit. It may or may not be in Walmart. You may be able to get it on Amazon or not. You never know. I'd go back. A haunt house thought I'm going to go back for sure. That's my review. I'm Maybe I'll bring some sweet it. baby rays with me. I'm telling you, you got to get that jealous pizza. I got to see what that shit looks like. I'm, for sure. I want to get that or the grudge because the grudge is the salmon meal with the, with the market toast. price. The market. <laughs> but how, gonna, how many salmon meals have you had? How many seafood pizzas have you had? None. I've had seafood pizza before. But like with all that shit on it? I'd have to, th- I'd have to look again, but I've had seafood pizza a few times. For fuck's sake, they're doing salmon. The the grudge is salmon. Yeah, it's salmon, asparagus. Why are they doing market price? Just fucking. The thing is, like twelve bucks, call it a day. It's fucking salmon. Well, it's gonna be more than twelve. But like, still, the fact that they don't have a a, re- a full time price for salmon. Like, Everybody are you, are knows that salmon is the cut? fucking jabroni meat. Like, no, no, good salmon's. I like. Really good. I, listen, I like salmon. I, don't get me wrong. I fucking like salmon. But come on, man, like. 
tuna. Everybody knows that tuna is the fucking one. Salmon's like the jabroni tuna. There's so many jabroni. The salmon roll is always cheaper than the tuna roll at the sushi place. Well, if you're going sushi grade, but like average tuna grade, like if you're getting something from a store or like a restaurant. If I'm getting average, then you better just put $12 on the fucking menu. Well, if you're going to put market price on there, then I better I'm fucking I'm see you it's come good. out and fillet the fucking fish in front of I'm me. I'm assuming it's going to be very fr- fresh salmon. So, But anyways, all right, what else we got? we got? We got some stuff to talk about on this. They're like fucking getting the goddamn fish from the Tsukiji f- uh, fish market in fucking Tokyo and yeah. importing it back. Just a couple announcements before we get into Halloween Kills. Um, obviously, this podcast used to have a different name. So we're still running the ad that says two nerds. Um, we have to record a new ad at some point. So that's been misleading for the two of you that listen to this. I apologize about that. The new Twitter handle. The two nerds that listen yeah. to the two nerds. Yeah. The new Twitter handle is at Brain Damage Cast. Is um, she a mum- munchkin cat? P- pumpkin? Yeah. She was the runt of the litter, but there's nothing genetically wrong <laughs> okay. with her. She's just very small and has a big head. Her legs are so fucking short. Yeah, pumpkin's a very short cat. Um, Miles is like, I need a fucking... Miles is getting, on that note, I need a goddamn beer. Miles is getting the, the beers, of course. Um, and we have a voicemail number that people can call... Tell us their shit, and then if people ever do it for some reason, we can play it on the show. Oh, wow. It's in the description. Make, of- it, make sure it's uh, appropriate for all audiences, please. Yeah, because... Even, even though our show definitely isn't. <laughs> so if you want to... Because- I don't want any voicemail. Actually, I do want voicemails where it's like, Oh, God, King Kong's dick fucking... <laughs> so if you want to leave us a voicemail, it's in the description of every podcast, but it's 216-694-8199. Because I figured, like, on Spotify and shit, like, if people want to give us their responses, like, on YouTube, you just comment on it. But on these other things that we're on, there's no way for people to really, like, get in touch with us. So, we'll try it out. We'll see if people want to... How'd you get this voicemail thing? This is big time. This is major league. I have my way. I have a House of Horror one, too, as well. Wow. Um, But, yeah, so... crazy. Call and leave brain damage a voicemail. Is this for me? Yeah. Is this for me? All right. Yeah, I, I, you you gave me some pizza tonight. I got to keep oh, finding yeah, nice. You still owe me five bucks, so this is oh, beer. Oh, right. my God. Cheers, cat. Jesus Christ. Kung pie. Kung pie. Did you say kung pie? Was that what you said? Kung con pie. Oh, okay. Kung pie. Kung pie. All right. Halloween kills. Jared, let's get into it, bro. What do you want me to get into? Don't you got something to say? You've been waiting for this got, for years, I bro. Got some stuff. I just want to. He's whipping out notes. <laughs> uh, I, I I I wrote down some I wrote down some stuff that I wanted to. Okay, I I was counting on you to be ready to lead into this, Miles. You just watched the film. I, I just watched it. What'd you think of the water pressure on that fire hose, Miles? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to say some as we're talking about that? Did it look? Because I'm watching. It this. looked like he was getting hit with a fucking super soaker. No, 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 no. Yeah, but what else was I going to talk? It looked like somebody was still putting out the fire on the top while everyone else was getting murdered. Rewatch the film and watch the right corner. Someone is shooting the flames with water while all of their fucking fellow firefighters are getting murdered. Hundred percent. I was cracking up at that. Uh. You have the freshest take, so what? We'll just just hop right in. What do you think? Okay, because because it's a mystery to us what you think. Because Jared and I's letterbox ratings are out into the world. I already They've did been a whole made, been made public a long. I time already ago. did my spoiler free review with both of you guys have listened to, so you know my thoughts on it. Miles is the enigma. Your, right here. your spoiler free thoughts um, were were very negative for the most part. They were. I have some more. Po- I, 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 I was like, this guy gave this a three and a half. If you apologized a- quite a bit during it too. I was like, I was like, buddy, it's okay. You're allowed uh, to feel half it. the half the review was like, sorry if I'm scramble minded here. I just saw the movie. I'm really excited. Uh, about like, all right, I'm just gonna go through quickly, like, because it is very fresh in my mind. When it first hit, it first started. The first probably until the title scene felt very like I didn't like that way it was either edited or paced. Like it felt the as hell? Mocha, just mocha, mocha, snoring. mocha snoring. No, not mocha. Just fucking already bitching about the pace and we didn't no, even no, get to no, the title it, card yet. No, but it felt like it almost felt like the scenes were on like 1.5 speed, but they weren't like things were happening. Yeah, fast they were like, rushing through flashbacks. They had to fucking probably fucking put in like an. Hour, two hours worth of flashback into like five minutes. I, 
that part, I was just like, oh, I hope the whole film's not like this. Of but, course it's not. It's a fucking flashback. No, but I meant like just the way that everything, not just the flashback. Like, well, technically it was all different flashbacks from 1978, 2008. I mean, the whole thing technically takes place in 2008. The, the 18. rest of the story. 18, excuse me. Um, oh God, that pizza's hit me, bro. Uh, but how was, what flashback in 2018? At the very beginning, beginning, which I missed on my first viewing. Oh, okay. Because this film must have literally had no trailers at all. Because when I walked in, it said, like, Halloween 1978. And I was like, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. And then I was like, I felt like I missed something. And then sure enough, I pulled it up on Peacock later. And there's that whole, like, 90 seconds or whatever, like, at the beginning. When the boyfriend finds... Finds the, the, the cop, uh, yeah. I missed all that in the theater. There was fucking... I was trying to get my popcorn. I feel it. I don't know. That didn't really seem that rushed to me, but whatever. It, I never thought about anything he's saying at all once. Okay. This is like, I never <laughs> thought about anything. Typ- typical of Miles' comments here. <laughs> I never thought about that. No, I mean, I just, that's my initial reaction. I'm like, oh, God, they're trying to do a lot really quick. I don't know. And like, I just felt like some of those scenes, especially if you guys felt like it was very, there was a lot of filler in this film. I the entire like, film was filler. I feel like not the entire film. Not the entire film, but I feel like there were there were there scenes. were plot developments. I feel like, okay, I a feel couple. Like, I feel like one the, at the beginning, a one at the beginning that was already given away in the trailer, and then one at the end. So how many is that? Two. A couple. A couple I feel yeah. like, no, couple. listen, listen. If you want to ask my opinion, I feel like the scenes. well, there was also one. There was also one very big plot development. We'll get to it, Miles. Say, I, we, say I what you're like, gonna say. I in feel the middle, like in the, the scenes the in the beginning where they're talking about. They called him Frank. What was his last name? The the, the Hawkins. Shit. Hawkins. Lori calls him Frank, but Hawkins. I feel like he was one of the quote unquote. There is a cast of main characters besides Lori in this. He's a main I character. Feel like yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a big big part of this film. I feel like they were trying to drive he didn't do his anything. His story, his plot point, where they keep talking about, which we'll talk about later. I feel like this leading in. I just wish they would have paced. His flashback scenes where he's the young cop and what's happening on Halloween night. Just certain things just a little bit better because I feel like that Fuck, is you want it to be 30 point. minutes of the fucking flashback scene? They could, no. But Fuck, they, he went back to his house and they fucking, he killed somebody else and they caught him. Just, your, your fucking boy is in the flashbacks though, the dude from Mirror on the Dying Girl. I know, I was, I was so fucking pumped. Pitting. I was so All right, pumped. all right. Let Miles get his shit out so we can get past the opening credits. But Wrap this up. I, well, if you guys want to interrupt it 15 fucking times saying the same dumb shit. Well, I want to talk around. about my top 10 games of all time again. You should. <laughs> Fuck. We'll be here till next year, till the next Halloween comes out. Halloween for right. Atari. <laughs> uh, buddy, you talked about it in your House of Horrors, like some of your stuff briefly. Good special effects. Obviously, a ton of kills. It's, ho- it's called Halloween Kills for fuck's sake. Um, it, it's just... I You hated the subplots, I guess. The subplots didn't, I didn't bother. Them. It's not that I hated them. It's just it was. They the, were. It was like, nothing. The, pointless. The, they, yeah, they, it was really, pointless. they didn't really do anything. The sub added for the body count essentially, but the subplots for me, like all the characters bringing back the bring back Tommy, which we'll talk about more things like that. None of that bothered me because they're not going to make three full films that are the same. Like they need to give Lori time to heal, give her time to prep. Uh, I like that they kept her in the dark. Uh, for part of the film, like she didn't know that Michael was, even though she's screaming, let him burn, let him burn on that. But uh, I you, don't like how they literally share zero scenes together. She's also uh, fucking on drugs like the entire movie. So when she wakes up, she could easily think everyone's telling her, yeah, we got him. She could easily think, OK, that that where the fire trucks flew past like that was a nightmare that was, right 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 that's she true. passed that's out good, like actually, instantly after yeah, she started that's screaming. a good that's a good uh that's actually a good take on that um i didn't mind i didn't mind the subplots because i just felt like this one this one I, okay to let you guys try i'm not gonna talk about everything right now but this one pretty much felt exactly what i thought it was gonna be i thought it was gonna be better than it was but pretty much pretty much not, without knowing the story pretty much exactly what i thought it was gonna be so do you like the film? Because Jared and I go, both gave it three and a half stars. I gave it I gave it three and a half. I almost gave it three, but I gave it three and a half. But I like 2018 better. I think 2018's a better 2018's film. 2018's well, obvi- better, well, yeah. Obviously. 2018's a better film. It's a better story. <laughs> uh, That's the problem. Like, I'm not arguing with the tone of this. The tone is, is 
spot on. The fucking ultra violence, the abundance of kills, all awesome. This is my yeah. favorite part of the movie. It's, yeah. it's it's great. It made it a fun movie. My argument here is that if you were going to do a trilogy of movies, you knew you had that middle movie, like your subplots didn't accomplish fucking fuck all in the movie. Like they didn't do anything. So, Write a fucking like. Don't write a filler movie. Write like some story, like more storyline progression. Like let the movie build up, build up, and build up more. Because I kind of agree with Buddy that at the end, like I did kind of feel like, oh shit, all right, now we're cooking. Here we go. You know what I mean? And then boom, it was over. To me, to me, this was what was Judy Greer? What was her name? What was this? The, the, Karen. The, to me, this was Tommy and Karen's film, which because, is fine. But they didn't but really do did, anything. They did. A, they did until the end. Did. Tommy was in the film a shit ton. Yeah, he got he his little mo- he got his little mob. mob together. Everyone hates the mob. I I mean, I thought the mob was hilarious. It was it was fun. like people. The thing is, people would do that in real life, especially if there's been. I don't know if it would 40. be that over the top. It wouldn't be where they were maybe. It wouldn't be as it wouldn't be them rushing through the hospital. Spoilers. I think that it, I think that it was trying to make like a political statement. Which it was. It wasn't trying. I mean, but very obvious. Like, but it was like too over the top to like really like even hit home with me. Like you're spending at least twenty five percent of the movie, if not even more, of them freaking out about this fake Michael Myers. That was so funny. That was <laughs> so fucking funny. Everybody hated that scene, and I was seriously just in the theater laughing the entire you time. You know the funniest scene? Every time it just cut to him, and he was just like, uh, uh, like, like being all pitiful running down the hall, and then it just like cuts back to just like a fucking mob of people just like, uh, just like chasing after him, and was just like crying the laughing. Funny, the funniest scene in the film for me is like in the initial couple minutes of the, of the film, the kid, the comedic humor from the first film, the boyfriend's friend, with the curly dumb hair, he gets impaled through the uh, fence. Right. His mom shows up earlier in the, the hospital. hospital yeah. Asperger, and then they do a hard zoom, an Okada zoom, we'll call it. She looks in the window, and it's like the camera goes, and she's like, ah! <laughs> and then it zooms in on his naked body, he's just laying there, zooms in on his fucking just pale corpse, and then it's I on that like it caught me so off guard because it was like. The cuts were very quick there, and I just started crying. That whole that scene part. was just so fucking chaotic that I just couldn't help but laugh. Seriously, I know that I said nothing happens in this movie, but like nothing of consequence happens at all during this. Like nothing comes of this. It's all just a build up to this guy fucking jumping out a window. But while this is at, like. 10 billion fucking things happen while it's it's going yeah. on. Like I said, none of them of consequence, but it's just like the camera's just cutting. It's like different things. Over. It's just like, just shit's happening, like, everywhere. And then one of the funniest scenes in the fucking movie and, like, has to do after all this happens. And, like, honestly, in these new movies, and he's a character I have in my notes, is why does he even exist? But for some reason, he's, like, my favorite fucking character in these new movies. Is the fucking sheriff guy? I was. I. I, I want to talk about dude, it, dude. I fucking I love him. I fucking love this guy, and I wish they would give this motherfucker something to do. He didn't have. Anything he had to nothing do to do in 2018, and he had nothing to do in this one. Like in 2018, he went around and asked some questions. Like that's what he did in this. Has he? He's never even encountered Michael Myers yet. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'd have to rewatch the other one. Like he no. just keeps showing up after Michael Myers is like left his mark, and he like basically just comes in like. Damn. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but like, um, so like the whole riot and everything fucking happens. And then like everything's starting to calm down a little bit and everybody's sad. The guy killed himself. They all know it's not Michael Myers now. How the fuck they thought this guy was Michael Myers he is was anybody's at least guess. two foot shorter than Michael Myers, but anyway. Like not even close. Even like Tommy Doyle saw him multiple times. Okay. And like I know he hasn't seen Michael in 2018 in like present time but he saw michael myers like fresh as like he wasn't four foot nothing when he was 19 <laughs> uh, when it was 1978 he saw michael myers like basically fucking point blank range like michael myers was standing right behind fucking Lori when they ran like out of yeah. the house um so he knows like how tall this guy is and so like it's just 
it's just kind of ridiculous. And he knows his mannerisms and, and like he yeah. doesn't fucking hop like a you know whatever. Anyways, everything's starting to calm down, and then it just cuts to a shot. Everybody's being it just kind of cuts between people being sad and shit. Cuts to the sheriff guy, and he just walks down the steps of the hospital, sits down, and just looks at his fucking ten gallon hat. Got stomped. He just puts his, <laughs> he just puts his head in his hands. Well, he's sitting there. It's not, even, it's not even him walking. It does a slow zoom up. I just it's, it's his hat, stomped hat, and it just zooms up, and he's just like. Staring like he lost his best friend. Like that was a <laughs> that's scene. his character. Yeah. That's his character arc in the movie. He's is that he lost his hat? He's just fucking defeated. Like a guy's life. He just had lost all control. So that was that was good. So you guys said my review was very negative. I will. I love that the movie just reminded me that I was watching a trashy slasher. Like, yeah, I agree. But. Again, like when I'm coming to something as like highly regarded to me as Halloween in 2021, I want something a little more than that. Like it's not fucking like Halloween five where it's like, all right, you know what to expect. Like in this, I thought like, as you said, like if you're planning a trilogy of films, like you'd figure this second one, it would have something more than it was literally just leading up. to. The I like one. I like the trashy, the trashy element to it. But I like again, I don't think that has anything to do. With just, like, story advancement. Like, there just was barely fucking any in this movie. The story, uh, I mean, like, spoilers, fucking uh, Lori's daughter dies at the end of the fucking movie. So that's the second, like, plot advancement. Other than that, the other plot advancement is, guess what? Michael Myers is still alive. He survived the fire. You saw that in the fucking trailer. And now he's on another fucking, he's, he's still on his fucking rampage. And the movie just stays there. It's just his fucking rampage, and like I, I guess Lori finds out. Everybody finds out he's still alive. I don't. I don't know. They're just like, I don't know. I don't have any suggestions of what they could have done. But like, I mean, there, at, there, at least something. There is that scene in the middle when Lori and Hawkins are sort of having like that heart to heart, and it's sort I of love it's, that it's, scene, it's sort actually. of it's, I love that scene. It's sort honest. of like implied that he's the father, which could lead to something but it's not leading to anything like michael myers related well he he said though in the in the hospital that he goes you know he fucking popped when they said ben tramer i know i know you were fucking i was screaming he's like but you were hot for ben tramer or something (laughs) i was like where honestly i popped but then i was like where is ben tramer it is Implied that he is still alive. Where is Ben Tramer? If he comes back in this third film, I actually I don't want to see Ben Tramer in this third film. I want it to remain a mystery. It's been a mystery for so long. Is this like an inside joke to John Carpenter that like fucking Ben Tramer's just never the only time he's ever been seen on camera, he was wearing a mask (laughs) and he got hit by a fucking car that exploded. There's a fucking One of the funniest scenes in Halloween history is when Ben Tramer gets hit by a fucking police car. I think it's a it's a police car, right? It's a police car. It just flies into because, him and then just yeah. explodes. Because you're thinking this cop in this and police car. And the guy car, gets out and he's like, I didn't see him. Because you think he's oh, taking yeah. a chance. You think he's like, all right, that's Michael. He's going to take him out. The first thing he says he gets out of the car, he came out of nowhere. <laughs> I didn't see him. Uh, speaking of the of the cop, though, they he says specifically that he wanted more with Lori, but he never had it. So he's not. I don't think he's going to be the dad. Because he said he, all he got that night was a kiss and a hug and a dance. But he goes, I wanted more, but That's true. you had the hots for Ben Tramer. So yeah. it's kind of strange to me that she still had the hots for Ben Tramer after a couple, oh, couple years. After yeah. a couple yeah, years. Yeah, because this had to be, yeah, this had to be. Because he's older. older. I mean, he's, yeah. a, he's a, he has to be a couple years older. I mean, he's not she, in high school. Yeah. He was probably, I assumed the young version of him was probably 21 in that because he was like very young still. He was looking. just like a rookie cop. Yeah, probably. like she was probably 18. He was 21, probably down the line. You so know. speaking of the younger version of him, what do you guys think of Donald Pleasance returning to the fucking big screen? How did he look to you? Because I thought he looked incredible. I, yeah, I thought he looked pretty good, I mean, to be honest. Ever since Star Wars Rogue One, and I saw what they did to Peter Cushing, I was like, I'm surprised they don't do more of this in film. Like in Doctor Sleep, if they would have had the actor actually look like young Jack Nicholson yeah. instead of just a fucking guy. But, yeah, he looked fucking great. Sometimes it works. I just thought, I just thought he was there. Like, no, he yeah. came in, and I was like, this looks incredible. Like, 
I'm that's all th- I can say because I know he's dead. But if like if he wasn't dead and they just fucking like brought him in and he looked exactly how he looked in, in Halloween one like he did there, I'd be like, God damn, Donald Pleasance looks fucking great. Like I wouldn't even have thought about CGI. What, were really, they using lines from the beginning of Halloween two? I couldn't tell. I think they just got like like somebody that did a really good Donald Pleasance impression. Well, I know for some of it, but I, but I can't remember if at the beginning of Halloween 2, he, like, goes into a house and is, like, talking to someone. I, I can't mean, remember. they could have been, it really could have been left over. A lot of those, because they did that for what, um, Star Wars has done that before. They got leftover, scene, like, voice scenes they had seen and cut them into something that was part of, like, the new film. So, I... I was kind of yeah, hoping one of you had looked it up or something because I was curious. About I just it. assumed that somebody that did a really good Donald Pleasance impersonation, a doctor, Doctor Loomis impersonation, um, just kind of did like a voiceover on it. But yeah, I thought it looked great. Because he just came, he just came yeah. in and was like, uh, you know, like, you know, did Mike did he kill again or or whatever? Yeah. And like, I don't remember him ever saying that in in any of the movies. No, I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it had to be maybe, like I said, either they, some old clip they used, so they decided to use it for this, or maybe, yeah, like you said, someone. But damn, he looked he looked great. They yeah, did, did really a good. really good job. The only thing, the only thing that I noticed that maybe wondered almost for a split second. Maisie, did, Maisie didn't even fucking notice that it was like anything anything fucking weird. But she well, noticed, she wouldn't have known. She right? noticed that I was fucking marking out. She's like, "Why is yeah. he fucking marking out?" I was like, "Cause this guy has been dead for fucking like 20, 30, thirty years. Yeah, almost, he's been yeah. For, like dead for he's been dead since like what nineteen ninety five. Somewhere Something around like there, that. like right after Halloween six, the second flashback when they're asking like when, um, I'm just gonna keep calling him Frank. right after they last, right, right after they finished production on it because he died before he it was, died before it premiered. Before 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 fun out. fact, but like this film, now Jamie Lee Curtis has been in more films than Donald Pleasance in Halloween. Wow, she's been in six. He was only in five. That is a fun fact because he wasn't in Halloween three, obviously. Yeah. It's interesting because I think of him like it being in like so many, and now she's been in more than him, and it's just like weird. Well, you know, his ass would have been in every single goddamn one if he never died, right? You know what I mean? Like he would still be in it fucking today. Could they you would... imagine him in Resurrection? Like he would. <laughs> like here's the thing: he would have been in uh, the the Rob Zombie ones too. Maybe not as himself, right? Yeah, but he would have been, been in like uh, he would have been a different character, making a cameo, or maybe even a major character. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, Danielle Harris is in those, and she plays True. a major character in it. Right, she's like the can best I, friend. Can I do a hot take if we're bringing it Is she it Annie? In, in I think she's Annie. She's, she's either Annie or the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Can you do a hot take? We were talking about tr- trashy slasher. There were parts of parts of this, just like certain scenes, certain things, that reminded me of Rob Zombie's Halloween films. Does, did you get any, like... There's violence and glore this. and violence and gore. No, but just some of the way. I, no, but I mean, just some of the. Some it's of the what stuff. fucking. Vi- it's what Rob Zombie's Halloween films should have should have been. Ultra violence. That was never my problem with the Rob Zombie films. The kills are always fucking awesome, but this didn't fucking have all the stupid fucking bullshit that's in those. Right. I know. I understand. Even though I like it, we, I, 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 I you them. know, I liked the first one at the time, but then now when I look back on it, and it's like, and it's like too revealing for Michael, and his backstory is the laziest, stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. There, no, he came up in an abusive home. Okay, this sucks. Like, wow, why didn't you just make a movie about fucking like John Wayne Gacy or something stupid? The white girls would have popped for that. But uh, I had something else I wanted to talk about, but now we, we got to. But that was that was just something I noticed. It reminded me of the Rob Zombie Halloween film. The violence but, is definitely similar. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. The violence of it all, because it's just like this ultra gritty, like, I think fucking, when his like, mask, violence. too, and it was burned, other things like that, like, it just, like, I, I just was having, like, I was Okay, feeling, but they didn't do anything fucking stupid, like, have his goddamn half his fucking face out for, like, the entire movie. They didn't. But we did get to see some of his face in this. Probably. Okay, you get to see some of his face in the original. I have no, I had no, no problem no. with it in this or in in 2018 because it's like okay, you see it. It's just like the original and like this. I was like, okay, yeah, I could see his face. 
but it's a shot from like fucking 20 miles it's away. It's out of focus. Out of it's, focus. Yeah, but in this they show, you know, they show his face he's putting it back on the side of his head. I was just surprised that they would that It's they really, really quick thing. shots, just like in the original movie. They fucking, you know, rip the mask right. off and he comes into light for just enough and it's not even enough time for you to really fucking see what he looks like. You're just like, but his face is there. You're like, oh, God damn, like, there's his fucking face. I still couldn't fucking tell you what he looks like in that fucking first movie. I know that John Carpenter thought it was funny because the actor that actually played him was actually, like, a really handsome guy. Yeah. And so, like, when he comes into the frame, he, he said, like, during the premiere, like, all the... Like women in the audience screamed like they were seeing something horrifying, but it was just this normal, like handsome looking guy with one of his eyes closed. Um, God, I had another talking point on that. Uh, what else do your notes say? Okay, so did you guys notice the little continuity air here? There was a huge fucking continuity air during the car scene. Where Michael Myers is, it's kind of like a homage to uh, Halloween 1 where he's climbing up on the car, he escapes the oh, yeah, yeah, Smith's yeah. Grove. Okay, so he's doing that and he's killing everybody. Okay, so the nurse girl, who's actually a doctor dressed as a nurse and her husband's a nurse dressed as a doctor. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, she gets a gun, she jumps out of the window of the car. All right? The scene proceeds for like another five fucking minutes. And this entire time, I'm like... Where the fuck did this nurse girl go? She jumped out of the fucking car. What the fuck happened? Michael gets done killing everybody in the fucking car. Just literally murders everybody, her husband, everything. And now this girl is like, hey, I'm 50 feet away from you, and I'm going to walk back towards you and start shooting you. I thought that whole scene was pissed, to be honest. The character choices were all really bad. Like, instead of them shoot sh- the, the Well, nurse. there wasn't a single fucking brain cell amongst no, them. The, that, <laughs> like, the old nurse from the original was just shooting out the window, and clearly he was stomping on top. Oh, just, it was just bad. And then Just drive. Huh? Just drive. Or just don't. She, she was literally wasting all her bullets. Like, Michael Myers put his hand on the side. If he's shot, like, jumping on top of the fucking car, drive, and he's going to fall off. It wasn't the whole thing. It was the other woman who was already out there with the keys. She wasn't was, but thing. goddamn, like, you could drive forward keys. and then drive back and run his ass over anything. But if they didn't have the keys, I don't That's know what I think. Keys. I think that was the whole thing, if I remember right, was she got out with the keys. But still, it didn't make any sense. I laughed when the guy who went back in. I liked the little thing where the, the doctor who was dressed up for Halloween, the nurse, he went back into the bar to get his, remember, stethoscope. And then he uses it to try to choke Michael Myers in the in the fucking car, and I just I laughed like obviously it was supposed to be I don't know if it was supposed to be funny, but it was fucking funny because Michael was like looked at him like, "Are you fucking kidding me? They're trying this." I I was like, "Man, that took some balls for him to try to do that because there was no way it was gonna hurt him." Then he gets the, one of, probably one of my favorite kills in the film where he gets stabbed in the eye and they show it up close. Yeah, that was pretty good. I, I think my favorite kill came right after that. When with with fu- the gun on the face. Oh my god, it was so, so fucking funny. That she goes to shoot him and just kicks the door and it whips the gun into her face right as she shoots. That was a desert eagle too, wasn't it? So funny. Like it was a like, revolver, I believe, of no, some sort. No, the girl had the revolver. She the, the old woman had it because she ran out of bullets. Mm. She fired it six times. And then she legit, the guy, the fucking, um, the little boy from the beginning who's now an adult, the, the boyfriend, not Tommy, the, the other guy, the one that gets picked on by the kids and he cowers. Oh, Lonnie. Lonnie, Lonnie. that's right. Yeah, I got to watch again. I can't remember. Uh, He's in the, the original. The, yeah, the yeah fucking, he was the one that was picking yeah. on Tommy in he, the original. He he goes up to the door in the original, too, of the Myers house. You're right. And yeah, Dr. Yeah, Loomis yeah. is like, you better get out of here, Lonnie. <laughs> or, or, you know, like that whole fucking deal. And he's like, ah, he runs away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, that scene was really funny. And I just like, oh God, like, why was she 50 feet away from the car? What took her so, like, why did she just ditch her fucking husband? Like, that scene was just like, pretty even, fucking stupid. Like, I like stupid shit, but it was pretty just stupid. All even, around. even like a fucking, just a quick scene of her, like running away and then just being like, Oh shit, like whatever her husband's name is, just like say his name, like fuck. No. Like she was like uh so uh like scared that she forgot 
about him until like she didn't and then she ran back to try and help him and then she got killed even something like that it's still stupid like how do you forget your fucking Especially husband because all these were grown adults that were in the edu- medical per- edu- edu- educated, edu- educated grown adults. adults all medical professionals who should have at least been able to like think a little bit like i don't know you know like, they were all doctors or a nurse in real life because even the old lady was the nurse from the original right. from smith's grove yeah. yeah she looked great by the way i surprised after all i mean like she looked like i was like oh wow she's like probably fucking 70 now and i can still recognize her yeah you know? i could recognize her so okay the one thing that fucked me up and i know you guys will be able to help me with this because i was having a brain fart when i was watching it it's been a busy day the the woman who is Lindsay. That she is she the other little girl? Remember how there's the three of them in this? From there's Tommy, the nurse. Lindsay's the girl that uh, Lori was fucking, or the, the Annie was babysitting. That's what I thought. Okay, I got I got a little because the scene happened quick. Yeah, and I wasn't paying attention. I couldn't remember her name either. But okay, that's what I thought. All right, that's who I thought that was. Okay, and she's still alive, right? Yeah, she she. Yeah, she lived through the whole film. Yeah, she yeah she still she hid in the woods alive. and then didn't really do much else after that. Well, okay, there was a scene and I thought I hope I'm not losing my mind, but I thought Michael choked her at one point. They were fighting in the woods, but she got away. Okay, that's what I thought. Because I thought I thought she might have hit his mask off. I, again, I watched this today's been busy, but something and I thought the cut happened really quick. It's like oh, what happened to her? She like went and like hit in the. Di- he was either like blo- I saw her in the ditch. I, like he might have got his eyes poked or something because he couldn't see. Okay, okay. And like it's, he was like kind of like wandering around, like trying and to then listen. He stood for on the bridge for like a fucking twenty had, minutes. Had an emotional moment, yeah. And, and then back. he fucking left. I liked the way the water was reflecting on him. It reminded me of Jason. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I guess when we're talking about this, the film. It is kind of all over the place. It's very chaotic, but I feel like maybe the tone. We t- you talked about liking the tone a lot. It's consistent, but when I think about a lot of the character choices, some make really good choices. A lot of them make the worst ever. And like I don't know, just when I'm talking about this, it does seem very disjointed the more I talk about this film. Not necessarily the tone, but the tone of how the characters act at times. I think that... It's okay because it is a slasher movie, and that's just like an homage to like slasher films in general. If Laurie Strode is out there acting like a fucking idiot, then then we have problems. And I think that's probably why it wasn't. As, I feel like maybe I don't remember. I haven't. I watched it again last year, but I don't remember um, how some of the side characters behave in in 2018. I want to say most of them were really fucking stupid in that too. You don't notice it as much because they're all high school kids because too. A lot, of, a lot of the ones that get killed are the high school kids. Because Lori is interacting with Michael a lot in that movie, and right. she's not fucking stupid, right? And neither are her daughter, like her daughter and granddaughter. We talked. You talked about it on yours, and one that obviously uh, bothered me a lot and bothered me throughout the film, even though it's stupid. The boyfriend and the granddaughter. I know bothered you. Uh, she like, it didn't bother me at all because the, the first thing he says when he comes up to her, I'm sorry, I'm I'm such a fucking idiot. He's trying to apologize. He does say, but she's got bigger fish to fucking fry. And that's totally fucking understandable. She knows that Michael Myers is still out there. And so she's like, listen, shut the fuck up. We're going to fucking go after Michael Myers. Like this is more important. And it is. She did. I will say the thing that saved that for me was that her face her face was perfect when he came up to talk to her because her her facial expression to me was like disgusted with him and then like he knew right away and he got to business. But I think just because his character for the whole film of 2018 was such a douche that I I, I was like I was like, oh do I buy in that he he saw the cop because he's the one that got is it was it Hawkins? Hawkins? Hawkins, the help he needed. So maybe he like is like it was like him growing up real quick. Like, oh, I got to do a serious shit. I got to take care of this. I got to be a man. So like, but like his still character well, was Well, he was so ready different. to apologize even in so, 2018. When he noticed that she noticed him, he was instantly like, fuck, like. So. But at, she lost her boyfriend, or she lost her cell phone because of him, right? Didn't he fuck her cell phone up in 2018? Like threw it in something? And that's why she didn't have a cell phone at the end of it? Something like that. But a- as I was saying earlier in this show. I came into the theater slightly late, and I didn't even see that scene in the oh, beginning where shit. he was like. Oh, I wow. didn't even realize that was at the very beginning. I where thought it was, was like a, 
Like in the middle of where the, he, the where he, scene. Where he was like leaving a voicemail like, oh shit, I fucked up, blah, 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 blah. So I went the entire film thinking it had never even been addressed. But, no, no, he didn't leave it in a voicemail. He did the first time he saw her. But he ran. He probably left a voicemail too. No, but at the very. Cause I re- but when he first sees her too, when they first he reunite in person, in person he yeah. apologizes in person and she basically like shuts him down and is like, we need to do this. She doesn't accept his apology. She doesn't reject it. She's like. Michael Myers, basically. Yeah. She's like all business, which I thought was. And then he gets was like, oh, me and my dad are going to go after him. Like, he basically just never, you know. Okay. But he died, and, and there was sweet justice, but it wasn't as sweet as you'd want it to be because now, throughout the course of the movie, he's been kind of redeeming himself a little yeah. bit. So when he died, I kind of thought to myself, I'm like, God, this isn't as fucking satisfying as I wanted it to be. They should have fucking killed him in the first movie. Like, right after the cheating scene, he should have been the one walking home and gotten killed in the fucking yard. They probably... Do they have all three of these written? They should have... They should have... They they should have fucking flipped it. They should have flipped his friend with him. He... And they probably did that for this exact reason, to fuck with us. Be like, oh, you wanted this bastard. Now we're going to make you almost like him by the end of the second film. I, I still didn't like him, but at the same time, I didn't fucking, like hate him anymore he was bully- he became i get believable that, i get that there's bigger fish to fry and all that but there were like so many scenes where it was just the two of them like alone like i feel like as you said his death would have had like a bigger impact if they would have set had some sort of conversation about it i was waiting for the conversation obviously I'm, so okay what we're on this in the original trailer at the end of the original trailer isn't there a scene of him walking with like a flashlight or something and then, I don't know if it was the way the trailer was cut, but then it looked like he was the one distracting Myers, and then she then she turns around to try to stab stab him, which she does. But she says, obviously, it's the fil- the scene that's still in the film. Go ahead and do it. And then she's referring to her mom. But didn't wasn't that how the original I don't, trailer I ended? Don't re- I don't. Recall. I thought it was classic Bloomhouse where they have a scene that's done. And that's it's not... It's like a reverse in the yeah, film. But yeah, yeah, I don't remember the trailer. I remember that very uh, vividly that he was already downstairs with her because it kind of caught me off guard when he was obviously killed upstairs on the steps. Uh, <laughs> he did take quite a bit of damage in his kill. He got like, fuck... He got shit oh, he got out of fucking, him for, He got fucking mutilated. I was yelling at the... It was the one t- of the most brutal kills in the fucking movie. I was, I was yelling at TV like, bro, just play that you're dead because you're sitting there like kind of shaking and breathing like just let michael myers walk past you bro and he's just doing that and michael like looks back he's like oh all right really snap i mean he was gonna die regardless he, i like at that point i like i said in the theater like when he snapped the neck and Maisie was like no like because he totally got redeemed to her yeah oh uh, like <laughs> You gotta, um, you gotta think, this is an 18 year old kid who probably has never had to deal with any real world shit. And I will say, when he got thrown in the fire, I guess he did all right. I mean, but. So that's why I was kind of like, all right, I, I get it. He's a fucking. We all know some douchebag 18 year old kids that have cheated on their people and are pieces of shit, so. But yeah, he snapped the neck and she was like, no. And I was like, honestly, like, that was a fucking mercy kill at that point. Right. Like, because he was just dying slowly, slowly. on there. And Michael Myers was just like, yeah, fuck you. And just fucking snapped his neck, which was hard. It was hard. <laughs> how, um, about, how about the gay couple that lived in his house? I love them for some reason. They just were like hilarious. Joel and Dan's like least favorite part of the movie. <laughs> they, were, they were very poorly written. But again, it's 80s trash. So like, yeah. I didn't have a problem with I it. Thought, like, I thought they were, and they were funny. And then they like fucked with the kids who, you know, they had the Halloween 3 masks. Um... I liked them. I liked, and I thought it was. I thought it was a cool little touch that they were living in, like Meyer's house, and someone to move into it, and stuff like that. Like, just a little. I don't know. I just liked that part of the movie. It, it could have been not in there at all, but I liked it. Like, I like the way Michael in this film, because like he doesn't really do this in like the old other older sequels, but like in these two, you get more of what you see in the original, where he's like really staging the bodies. Because, yes. like, he does, like, the yes. thing with Judith Myers or whatever, like, yeah, in this one. Yeah, Joel, Joel talked shit on that because 
uh, in the comments, he was like, what's up with it? Like, he's setting all these bodies up. Since when does Michael Did Myers you not watch the post original? bodies? And I literally responded with the picture of Judith Myers <laughs> in the bed. And I was like, Michael Myers staged bodies in the original movie. You just yeah. didn't like always- Lori, Lori goes through, like... The entire bodies at the end, like yeah. he has them all fucking set up for. Her. Like she opens the closet and the fucking body, like yeah. is, is falling down, hanging. Judith Myers, well, it's um, I think it's Annie that's on the bed, um, like sprawled out with the Judith My- Judith Myers tombstone, and then whoever was in the closet or whatever. Yeah, but and then one of the scenes that I love that like we've never seen Michael actually stage a body before, but we get the scene of him like in the kitchen. Where he just has like the knife block and he's just like That's grabbing so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not even stabbing it. That I, was so good. And I like the way that he like balls his fist <laughs> after yeah, he like, does. Yeah. He's like <laughs> I uh I popped in that scene. That whole okay. So the scene with the woman and she's flying around the drone, that whole sequence, I love that sequence. Uh I thought that guy was hilarious. Like when he sees Michael and he's just like, ah! <laughs> I was like, oh like, oh, here we go. I'm Ooh. in, I'm in. You know, I was like, I'm really excited. <laughs> And then I like before that I popped for this. Does anyone know what film was playing on their little TV in the kitchen? I wasn't paying attention. It was the Fun House. Toby Hooper's the Fun House. Oh. And I was like, so I, I'm a huge mark for that film. So I popped. I I didn't know what the gay couple was watching when he was smoking weed at the end. Does anyone know that? Does anyone get that? Again, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't paying, paying, attention. paying attention. I think that actually kind of in the theater um, when they were watching something, I think. That I noticed that it looked familiar, but I didn't know what it was. I it was I couldn't tell. It, it was something seventies, but I, I didn't know what it was. But the fun house, the fun house. I was like, I was like, oh nice. Like I was like, I was I popped at that, but I love that film. Um, I like those little tidbits from like directors and writers that love horror because we just watched and we talked about it on the other podcast, Candyman. The one thing I didn't talk about on that podcast is when they walk into the laundromat and the that main guy's reading. He's reading Clyde Barker's Weave World. So just like a little, I love those little, if you're a horror fan, those little, those little Easter eggs. Uh, A lot of modern horror directors do it more so than ever. Because Clyde Barker wrote Candyman, didn't he? I I don't think so. I think it's based off of a Clive Barker story. It is. It's a a Clive Barker uh, short story. Oh, I didn't. I actually, I learned something on the podcast today. There's, yeah, it's a. I know something more about Clive Barker than you do, Miles. I'm actually reading a Clive Barker novel right now. It's based on one of his short stories, but a lot of the, uh, like, aspects in the film universe are, like, not, like, mention like his race is never mentioned in the Clive Barker story or anything like that. Whereas like it's a huge thing in the right. in the Candyman like films. Not just the new one, but even and, in the yeah, original. Yeah, the original, yeah. Hey, I learned some in the podcast today. It's possible I've heard it before, but I- I've still never seen Candyman three. I don't know if I admitted that in another podcast. It's terrible. <laughs> it's no, I mean, so I'm just, okay, that's, that's another, I've never, I've never seen the. What's first it called? One. It's Farewell to the Flesh. Like I've only ever seen the first one and then the the new one. Yeah, so. I mean, keep it that way. <laughs> Candyman two. I liked it when I is okay. It's, it's, it's just like I don't remember anything about it, but I remember that I didn't hate it, and I remember. And I watched all three of them when I was like very early into like my horror watching career. And even then, when I watched Candyman three, I was like, "Man, this sucks!" Like it wasn't very good at all. Miles will love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to one. I'm I'm a sucker for. I love horror sequels. I mean, I think anyone knows that about me. But I'm not gonna say they're all great. But if I if it's something in a universe I like, I can pretty much watch whatever as long as it's not a uh, Hell World. As long as it's not Hellraiser, Hellworld, fuck that film's bad. But uh, what else do you have to say about Halloween Kills? I mean, you always complain we don't let you get your shit in. So oh no, I'm get, I'm getting it in. Uh, I wish you would. Have, God, I had a lot. I feel like I had a lot to say. I was ready when as soon as I left watching it. <laughs> no, as soon as I left watching the film, I was like, all right, I'm ready to do this fucking podcast. Um, I the- I like Tommy's story. We you talked about how he's a trash actor. He's Anthony and Michael Hall? He blows in this. It's fine. Again, like, it's fine, but it's not good. Most of the actors in the movie, I thought, were piss, except for Jamie Lee I think it might be Jamie like Lee Curtis. Some, of the, some of the dialogue was written. The dialogue, the dialogue, was, the dialogue fucking, was fucking was dog bad. shit. Yeah, yeah. like, I want to say, like, some of it, they just were very unnatural lines. I feel like, did anyone notice a lot of the granddaughter's lines were, like, absolute piss, like, the way they were written? Like I they, thought that the entire 
Strode family's lines were like the better of like everybody in the movie. Judy Greer's her like the the mother. I thought she was great. I thought her lines were great, but I didn't. I think fifty percent of what's her face's lines were not good. I feel like they were trying to force the granddaughter to be becoming this badass. I mean, she does do badass shit in the first one, but I feel like some of the lines in this, like, I wasn't fully sold that she was like there yet. Still, does that make sense? I don't know. When I was watching the film, I was th- I didn't think this in the first one, but in the second one, I was like, damn, I wish they would have got Allison Hannigan to play the fucking daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Judy Greer, I don't know why I was like, bro, she would have killed it. <laughs> so it fucking from How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, I know. What does she even look like nowadays? Just like Judy Greer, <laughs> that fucking film about the same age. And I uh, I liked. I'm just I, so used to seeing her in How I Met Your Mother now, and like her going through all the stages in that that I like see her as an older lady now. I couldn't see her as a teenager. No, 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 not as a teenager, as the fucking, the mother. Oh, okay, okay. Not as the granddaughter. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I guess I could see that. Okay, but God, do you think she could do it? Yeah. (laughs) I think she'd kill it. All right. I didn't think. I've always just seen, I've never seen her in anything but comedies. And she's always got like that little dumb smile on her face. And then you wouldn't expect it when she comes in with the fucking pickaxe. Well, you know, I definitely Fucking hard. I didn't expect it when fucking Michael Myers popped up behind fucking Judy Greer. Fucking. Can we talk about the twist? The is, quote unquote tw- is it trailer really? all twist. All right, all right. So you talked about it in your thing, okay? And it, and it was in the trailer, and it did sound kind of fucked up in the trailer. When I watched it in the context of the movie, it actually didn't bother me that much. And now when I think about it, honestly, this, out of all the fucking. Uh, like, I guess, backstories or whatever, or just, like, reasons for Michael Myers to kill that has been given in the different timelines and different movies. Out of all of them, this one's probably the fucking best one, if you think about it. Because you got fucking... It's better than the cult shit. You got... It's better than the cult. It's better than, um... Goddamn fucking, oh, I was fucking abused as a child, and now I see a fucking white horse in fucking Rob Zombie's wife. Like, it's better than that. Um, what what else is there? Goddamn. Um, well, H2O and Resurrection, it's back to, like, nothing, but... Right. You know, it's better than fucking, like, I have to kill my entire family for some reason. Which was, like, tied into the cult, but wasn't originally tied into the cult with, like... It's still carried over in the H2O. The two in the H2O H2O timeline is just kind of like he's just trying to kill his family. But there wasn't a reason for it. I don't know. To me, I just wish they wouldn't have went the supernatural route. Like, again, like, I don't know. Well, obviously, he's semi-supernatural in some way. Considering he got shot multiple times and and stabbed multiple times. If you're going to explain, like, his supernatural ability to survive anything... Him killing people and fucking becoming more immortal or whatever, every person he kills. I mean, that's a better fucking explanation for it than I think that we've probably ever gotten. I like, I like. The I just hope. Here's what I hope. I hope that in the next movie, it, it isn't some, piss. it isn't some fucking weird thing where it's like, oh, when he was a kid, he opened a spell book and like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I he think, had to fucking I cast a spell. Now, the, I don't think they're. Well, gonna what was go it? it what was it? He has to make blood sacrifices. He's a witch or something. Well, like stupid. in the Thorn like, trilogy, it was like what, like his fucking like babysitter or something did the spell on him, like some, like, ritual. Jesus like the, Christ. The yeah, cult. she turned out to be the fucking old lady that was, like, in the thorn yeah. cult. God damn it. I hate the storyline for part six, but I love that movie I so love, much. I love Chris and Michael Myers I'm so telling much. you, we gotta watch the producer's cut now that's on blu It's the worst thing ever. It's I so still, bad. I still have never... S- no, I watched a really bad quality copy of the producer's cut. I've, I've seen a really bad quality one as well. I bought the bootleg DVD at Cinema yeah. Wasteland. Yeah, I've never seen the, the Blu-ray one. I have it on Blu-ray. Now, uh, so it's we like the it. movie's so fucking pissed that I don't want to see it in Blu-ray. We gotta watch it. God, it's so I'll watch fucking it. I want to watch I'd like to watch a good quality i mean i I mean it's piss it's so bad it's it's like the second worst halloween movie i've ever seen (laughs) behind h2 
Well, I liked I liked the whole sheriff story arc in this law. It's probably my, probably one of my. What didn't do anything? No, but I liked that he was the one. Like he went when they the were going to shoot Michael Myers, and he. Dot block oh, the Hawkins. Shot. Oh, Let's just say Hawkins. Hawkins. Not, not the sheriff with oh, the cowboy hat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, wish the, I wish the cowboy hat guy had a lot uh, more to do in this. There's so many. I don't. It's hard when I don't know all the characters' names. He I just looks fucking. I'm, I'm pissed. We've said, we've said his name is Hawkins like a thousand I know, times. I know, but, but I guess I keep remembering Lori calling him Frank the whole time because she by his first name. I want to call him Frank the whole time. You can call him Frank. That's also his name. Okay. Well, I like that he, when they were about to kill him, and the flashback, you find out later, and he, you know, makes stops the shot, hits the hands up so you don't shoot him, and he talks about thinking he like, stops oh. Loomis. Yeah, Loomis is gonna shoot him, and he fucking uh, pulls takes Loomis. No, pulls I thought Loomis. it was the cop and Loomis. No, was no, 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 no. Loomis, Loomis, has Loomis the gun walks out head. of the house and fucking okay. points the the revolver down at him, and the guy runs up behind him because he was upstairs. So he comes from out of the house behind Loomis I, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and fucking pulls the gun up. <laughs> it's hard because they do that flashback. They do the thing this way. They do that flashback a few times. They don't do the final reveal that he does that to him. And then they finally wait till way, obviously way right at the end of the film. And they show that he runs out. I th- and- uh, Just a, like a nitpick thing. I think they showed way too many flashbacks in this. Like they would cut back to the 2018 one and like show like 10 seconds. And they'd cut back to 78 from the actual 78 film. Right. And it's like, we've seen this shit before. Like you don't need to. There's home video. Like, it's not like an 80s film where you have to show, like, the fucking flashbacks. I think part of it, too, is they were just trying... I feel like they were just like, well, we're just going to make sure that you, everyone knows we're retconning everything besides Halloween 1, Halloween 2018, and we're going to make sure... Because people were still... Fans online, things were like, oh, they can still make Halloween 2 part of the continuity, things like that. And I feel like this was kind of like... Uh, well, that's ended right at the beginning when it shows right. them getting captured instantly. Right. I feel like that was a big point of that, you know, to make sure like, no, the new story, our, our timeline is just going to be, you know, the new trilogy and then the original, obviously. But, I don't, do we talk about the end more? I mean, we kind of started to talk about it when we didn't. I mean, she fucking dies and then she, you know, she gets killed. For better or worse, like, I think everyone can walk out of this movie and be dying to see what happens next. Well, like this, yeah well you think fucking it's- Lori's gonna fucking bust out of the hospital like her and michael are gonna come face to face again and now the only question is is she going to kill him or is hawkins going to kill him and right his wrong from fucking 40 years ago or whatever I, if I, you can kill him because there's still this yeah if you can if you can because Lori seems to know more about this supernatural element to it than anyone else here's does, another thing for some that I, here's another thing that i want to put out there okay and this is just ha- head cannon for me and i don't think this is the way that they're gonna go but it's also they also haven't shot it yet so it's also it's all there could be some fan it's, response a, it's also it's also a thing of where like how would no Lori know any of that Right? So here's my here's my thing. She's fucking high as a fucking kite when she's saying all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. she is fucked up. And it really did seem like kind of like the babblings of someone that was like fucked up. You have to also realize how fucking paranoid and how much she's obsessed about this her entire life now. Michael could have not gotten up. That could have just been her imagining the whole fucking thing. No, he's definitely up. But that's just Michael Myers. Like you're not going to kill Michael Myers. I, like, what, how would she be imagining? I mean, I guess she should be, could be imagining that, but that would mean the entire ending of the movie was all imagination, which is bullshit. That uh, would suck. My in my head, you know how I think they're gonna do it. I don't know. I I could be completely wrong. I think they'll kill both Lori and Michael at the same time, and maybe Hawkins will be alive. Maybe he won't. I think the only person maybe to Hawkins alive, will do it. Kill Lori, both of Lori them. will be holding him or whatever, and yeah. and. It'll be like one of those, do it! And then yeah. he's going to be struggling with it, and he has to kill both of them. I think they're going to kill both of them. That's my prediction. I think Lori and Michael will both die, so they can be like the nail in the coffin. Because what's What role does the granddaughter play in it, though? I think she just fucking lives. I think she's just going to be... I think I think either Hawkins... She's got to have a bigger gonna, role than just she, survive. Well, the, I think she's going to be the one to help Lori, quote-unquote, kill Michael... But Michael's also going to kill her. Well, because uh, the, the thing that I like about this is obviously the daughter dies at the end. 
Lori's daughter. That's going to be the fire that's going to light Lori and the granddaughter through the fucking roof. So in my head, are they going to wait? Because Lori's like, oh, he might not come back. We might get him tomorrow. We might get him next week. We might get him next Halloween. I assume she's now going to take a year to heal and plan everything to kill Michael. I don't think the third one's going to take place in the same. Yeah, it has to take place on the same night because how do they explain Michael's that he's just, just murdering the entire world? The world for is he just sitting in his fucking house all year. I think they'll just have him fucking They know where he is. He, yeah, but he killed everyone on that block. I mean, all the people that were outside. I think it's going to be the same night. I like, think, I think they're going to find the body. I think they're going to find the body, and then Lori and, and the daughter are going to be pissed, and fucking the manhunt's going to begin. Well, well, the daughter's still, like, what, two houses over? And the, par- the paramedics were tending to her. Like, she, her mom literally got killed fucking two houses over from where she was. I mean, they could do, and they could definitely 100% do that. I don't, I just, the way that Lori worded things, I was kind of like, ah, that that was just how my my brain put it together. But, I mean, it'd be cool if it was all one long night, one long night. I mean, because they don't. I think that's how they should do it. Like, how are you going to make Michael disappear for a year I mean, or they two? Did it, they did, not two, I don't want to do two, but like, I mean, they did it in every other Halloween film. That's just. He I, was also in a cult. Yeah, there was also a reason why he only killed on Halloween, and this he's just. But they start hinting at the supernatural shit, so I don't, I don't. But it has nothing to do with the day of the year, the calendar year. As far as we know, it could be the fucking thorn cold again. For all we know, we don't. Know. I don't. If they're they're really, not going to go that they're way. Gonna go. Everyone. I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying everyone we don't know hates what it the is. fucking thorn cold. They won't go that way. No, they might I'm make just, a reference to it, but like I'm just saying, no one knows what it is. They haven't even shot the fucking film yet. It's shooting in January. I I think the Lori and Michael will both die. That's my prediction on on that. I think they'll both die. I'm not sure if. I think that's a pretty sound prediction since Jamie Lee said this is it. I have a feeling this is going to be. They're. Gonna, I feel like they're also going to do this. They're calling it Halloween end. I mean, how can I mean? It, it has to be. I mean, how can she do another one? Well, right. The thing is, like, I don't even think Fiat yeah, physically. They'd she have would to. Fu- or they'd be have able to fucking. To. They'd have to fucking reboot it again and still fucking have her there. Which would be like she'd be ninety. <laughs> yeah, it'd be too. It would be too fucking tired at this point. I feel. How like many times have you rebooted it with fucking Jamie Lee Curtis? I feel like with three. This is the third time. John Carpenter. The second time. No, because H two O is still kind of, kind of a, of a it's reboot. A soft reboot. It, then what's the third reboot with Jamie Lee Curtis? This, this one. This. this. Yeah, this is the third. Oh, second okay. Re- second the reboot. Th- okay. Third, the second reboot. Third, third timeline. Third yeah, timeline yeah, yeah, yeah. with Jamie yeah. Lee Curtis. Uh, yeah. I feel like they're really trying with this to be like, because they have John Carpenter on board. They have everyone on board. They want on board. <laughs> John Carpenter on board, quote unquote. Well, he, he, you know what I mean? He gave his he blessing. He played fucking he Metal it. Gear. He's like, yep, looks good, bro. <laughs> but I mean, I feel like, I feel like they want this to be like, this is going to be the definitive line. We have lore. We have everyone back. Like, this is going to be how, what we think Halloween should be. That's, that's how I feel when I watch these films. I don't know. I think it's the best timeline as far as, like, you know, story goes. Thus far, it's been the best timeline. Unless you just, like, the, uh, maybe it's even with the Halloween 1, Halloween 2 timeline. I love Halloween and Halloween 2. I mean, I... I mean, I, I, I still have Halloween 2 rated a half star above 2018. Do I think that stands? I feel like they're even in my I eyes. feel like, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like Halloween 2, I don't know, it's my favorite Halloween film besides the first one. So. I've, I've talked about It's Miles' favorite of all time. <laughs> I've talked about Halloween Facts. 2 in great, in great detail, so I don't think I need to. Halloween 2 is the movie that got me into horror movies. That's also Straight one up. of them. That's so also like, one of them. It's so. not one of them. It, it is the movie For that you. got me yeah, into yeah, horror See, movies. but you both saw it before you saw the original Halloween. Correct. I saw it after... And I've seen them all a hundred times since. I still think it's the second best one. Um, I f- yeah, I love Halloween, Halloween too. But I think on a not a closing note because we can we still talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. With well, Michael spot. Myers getting burned to death is kind of a lame death when you when you think of all the shit he ends up going through in the end of the series by the like well, throughout the know, series. I guess we didn't know at the time, but at the same time, he got shot six times. In the in the first movie, and then 
He burned to death in the next one. Well, because it was a, the explosion of the oxygen tank. But he still walks. He still but fucking guess, walks out. I guess he walks body, out totally on fire and then collapses and dies. But I guess if your body is entirely engulfed in flame, it's more definitive than just being shot a few times. Blow his head off. That's what's definitive to me. That's the only thing that's never happened to Michael Myers oh, is I that he's been, the, he's been decapitated. The the sh- everyone had shovels. They had all these he almost they got just, decapitated in H2O, H2O, but it was the fucking jabroni. Ambul- ambulance driver, yeah. That's what I always want them to do. On this one, they have him down on the ground in the center of the street. They had those shovels. I would have taken a shovel right at the back of his neck, stomped as hard as I could through the fucking thing. Like, they just don't. They didn't follow through. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe, maybe because we've all watched enough horror films, but I'm sorry. If some crazy motherfucker like that, I'm going to dismember him. How, dismember him. How hard would you pop if they fucking decapitated him and were like, all right. And all of a sudden his body just stood up. I was going to say his head just like crawls back to his body. He just fucking stood up, picked his head up and just set it back on his shoulders. It was just like. And then just fucking went back to town. The world would have hated it, but I would have screamed. <laughs> I, would have the, I would have been in the air like this. I would have been levitating in the circle. Like this. So I'm like, like, all right. Because uh, that's really it. Like, in all the timelines, that's the one thing that's never fucking happened to... Well, he got his head blown off in, in H2, right? Shotgun point blank to the face at the end. That's at the end of the first one, and he survived. Doesn't she do it again at the end when they're all in the no, cabin? No, he, he literally gets gunned oh, down wow. by like a billion people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, he gets shot again in the cabin and dies. There's two endings to the film. Neither of them... Are good. Are good. <laughs> and neither of them, I would say, probably definitively and the, kill him. And the alternate ending is the fucking... Die! It's the worst fucking thing I've ever That's seen. That's the one life. where they fucking shoot him down with like fucking helicopters and shit. <laughs> that is the worst fucking thing. I, when I watched that on YouTube, I was like... This is I've the never worst. seen that ending. It's literally, he takes his fucking mask off, goes up to fucking Lori Strode or whatever, and screams die at her before he tries to kill her. And I'm like, Thank. His only spoken dialogue ever. I don't know if, I don't know if fucking uh, Malik Akkad saw that and went to Rob Zombie and was like, you're fucking changing that. Because why did Rob Zombie ever even think that that would be a fucking good idea? I feel like that movie was, like I've said, it was anti-Halloween. Halloween was almost like a fuck you to Halloween fans. And I think I liked the balls behind it. But obviously, I knew I knew watching that you weren't going to like it. I knew other people weren't going to like it. But anyways. Well, he said fuck you to me. I'm like the biggest fucking Halloween fan there is in Ashtabula County. I, I will <laughs> I will say. Uh, I'm sure Malik Akkad's a bigger fan than I am. Uh, he fucking Mustafa better, Akkad but definitely the fucking was. Fucking go, bro. <laughs> I, I will say, on a side note, it is the podcast, his stills for the Munsters came out. I sent those to the group. God damn, did he have to cast his fucking wife in this again or in a, in a main role? Cause it, they Rob all Zombie's were, making a Munsters movie? Did you not see that? I shared it to the group. It's filming right now. I mean, I could care less about what Rob Zombie's doing, but so if you posted anything that said Rob Zombie on it anywhere, I was probably like, nice try. I, I, well, I posted it today. I don't. It just came out. What it came out today or yesterday? The stills. It was either today or yesterday. And the know. answer is yes. He has to cast his wife and everything. She's not even hot. She's not even hot, and she looks. She's gotten even skinnier and worse. She looks like shit in every fucking movie I've ever seen her in. When she was in Thirty One, her rib like you literally. Her she looked like she had a spider imprinted on her chest, but it was just her bones. Like she has like no. She has no anything. All right, we're talking about some hot girls. We're getting a little too hetero. Are you guys forgetting it's Cocktober? All right, all right, all right. My, all right. okay. My final notes. Final notes in the film. Any final notes? No, because we. Need, I like wrapping things up. Any I final think. Notes? I think we're good. I think we. We. I think we beat it to death here. I think. I think we liked it. I think once we see we all the Halloween it. ends, I think we're gonna appreciate this one more. I think it's. Gonna I be, don't think that. I think it's a, no. I think it's a true. I think. Thing. I, I think I'm, I'm gonna hoping have the Halloween see. ends will come out, and I'm hoping that it'll make me hate the second one more. It'll be because I'll be like, man, what was up with that fucking piece of shit in the middle? I think I'm going to have the same opinion of it now, which is that it's a fun 80s trashy movie. Would I have wanted something better? Obviously. But as it is, it's still three and a half stars. It's still Halloween. It's still. I'm going to rewatch it a couple more times. I'm going to see it in theaters and I'm going to probably watch it on Peacock again. See how I feel about it. But I, I really did enjoy it the first time. There's some 
inconsistencies, but we did talk about those. So. I enjoyed it. I was smiling most of the time I was in the theater. So if I bet you if I saw it in theaters too, I would have been marking out more because seeing super hard gore in a theater is it's my shit. I so. swear to God, like it's just a fun, stupid movie. That's literally all it is, and I like fun, stupid movies. Um, so that's that's my take on on Halloween Kills. I seriously thought for a second. When they mentioned Ben Tramer's name, it's like you had a crush on Ben Tramer. He was about to walk into that hospital like fucking Ash Williams with a fucking shotgun. Oh <laughs> like, what if, it was I got you. what if it was literally played Bruce by Bruce? Campbell. They could have oh got Bruce Campbell God, to play him. So legendary. Bruce Campbell is Ben Tramer. Holy He's shit. around the right age. That would have been incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the sexiest Michael Myers? We got to get to the fucking bottom oh, of this. Shit. The sexiest Michael Myers. Well, it's definitely not. Are and we just going to fight for who picks the first Halloween? It's game? definitely not Rob Zombie, uh, Michael Myers, especially not H2. Sexiest Michael Myers. Is it H2O, the CGI mask? Is that, is that the sexiest version of Michael Myers? Uh, well, it's not just a CGI mask. It's literally the worst CGI I've ever so seen. So are we life. going off of the mask? Are we going off of the feats in the film? Are we going off? Just throw it all in there. Yeah, feel, yeah you could just. So uh, we're saying mask on during sex, just like with Jason. Because well, I, without, feel like, without, I feel, without, I, without I feel like you got to. I feel like Jason taking his mask off during sex would be more sexy than Michael Myers taking his mask then off. Then I feel like you got to take. H2O out of this immediately because that you see too much of his eyes. You don't want prolonged eye contact with the uh, Halloween H2O while you're having sex with him. If this was the 70s, by far the sexiest Michael Myers would be the fucking one with the slick back hair from yo, from yo. the fourth one. All right, I got I got mine. I'm just gonna do a random curse of Michael Myers. Michael Myers. What makes him sexy? Just. I, I, Talk to us about why you get an erection every time you see the curse of Michael Myers. Michael Myers. I just like that he's like very direct in this, and he just seems to know what he wants. Uh, he's kind of got the killing down to a science. Uh, and in the producer's cut, he fucks his niece. There, oh, there you go. That's why. That's why it is. Uh, no, no, I know. Uh, <laughs> because Miles is very into incest. There's, there's just some really fucking. It's really fu- big on on the internet now. What? Incest. <laughs> oh I think it's like one of the top tags on Pornhub. I'm like, well, I think that they removed like the actual like you, incest tag and like all of, like the incest kind of videos. They put step in the in the name now, even if it well, obviously is step, or isn't. Step sister brother porn is is beyond huge. Obviously in Pornhub. <laughs> and it sucks. I think I've talked about something before. You go on there and you're like, oh, this chick's hot, and then you look down at what the title is and you're just like Fucking hell, I'm at to mute this one because it's like the whole time she's like, fuck me, stepbrother, fuck me. I just I just got my pick. Uh but Can I just claim it? Can I just lock it in right now? Yeah, do it. Halloween the porn parody, sexiest Michael Myers. Oh my god. Never seen it. Never seen it either. Didn't you watch some of it at Dan's house during a Halloween party one year? Or was that before you ever even came? You never came to Dan's house when he still lived in that like underground like no, apartment I was, thing. I was there. That's when I first met him because that's where we watched uh, Edward Penis Hands. But he only lived there for probably six to eight months, and then he moved when I met him. Well, I know that the first Halloween party I went to, Lando like fucking showed up with the Halloween porn parody and Dallas Buyers Club porn parody. Oh my and, god! And like we watched like a little bit of the Dallas Buyers Club one, and then we put on the Halloween one, and the sex scenes were way too long. Like each sex scene was like thirty minutes, and I was like, "Fuck!" That was probably I've never wanted to see a plot more in a in a in porn than I did in the Halloween porn parody. That was probably the October before I met them because I met everyone at Royal Rumble in January, so it was probably before that. It's where that like famous, um, oh where that famous uh, if the picture audience, on if Twitter. The audience could see what we're like, looking come, at right now. Come, um. You know that famous picture that was like a Twitter meme where it was like me and my girl on Halloween or whatever, and like they're in the bathroom mirror, and it's like oh, Michael Myers. Oh, like, yeah, that's yeah, from yeah, the that, back. That's from, oh, I yeah, didn't know. That's oh, from that. okay. Well, I'm still gonna go with the curse. I guess he's. Are you really gonna go with the porn parody, Michael Myers? Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, he's the only one that. Well, besides yours, he has sex in that too. In the produ- in the producer and the cut. producers, it's not on screen though. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's implied. It's implied. Implied. Uh, rape of the niece. <laughs> I just liked him from fucking how I like. There's those scenes of him like towards the end where he's like walking real like hard and manly. He's like on a mission. He knows what he wants in it. I like it. It's like a flashback scene. So like Jamie's baby in the producer's cut is Michael Myers' baby. Uh, yeah. They like, the the whole sex thing is like a flashback sequence. I don't remember that from when I watched it. I think I watched it on YouTube. Unfortunately, so. you do not see his dick. I mean, if you saw his dick in the producer's cut, then we're talking like a five out of five movie here. As it stands, it's like a zero out of fucking ten, but... We're going to have to... Jared's talking out the producer's cut pretty high, so I'm definitely going to have to watch the, the Blu-ray version if of If you ever soon. wanted to see Michael Myers be stopped by Paul Rudd just by putting rocks on the floor, then the producer's cut is the movie for you. Fucking Paul Rudd, the man. All right, buddy, we gave our picks. What do you got? It's hard for me because it's a toss-up between the two obvious ones, which are the original... And the porn parody. And five, right? And the I was, mask and five, right? The mask and five is the absolute fucking worst, th- most atrocious thing I've ever seen in my that fucking life. That doesn't get your dick hard. The the mask. His and five? fucking neck looks like a dick. <laughs> Boy, it's a here very we thick That's what we're throbbing. About. A thick throbbing. I, dick I guess mask. if you if you want to be fucked by Michael Myers's mask, you got to go with part five. But I was gonna say the sexiest Michael Myers is either from the original, or I feel like he was getting a lot of attention online in 2018 when he came back because it was a big thing. To be like, oh, Michael Myers like hot now. I almost want. I almost want the 2018 one. Yeah. So it's hard. I think I'm going with the classic original Michael Myers. But, Pretty sexy. Pretty sexy. No doubt about it. Sexy. Um, and technically, it's the same Michael Myers that's in 2018, just a silver fox version. True. So. True. It has Nick Castle. He, uh, Nick Castle playing him again at the end of the movie when those. Oh, take I wonder because he has a goat. He has a goatee, right? Yeah, because it was Nick Castle in in 2018. When is when he was standing in the fucking in the in the mirror right in the, in the like, window shot. So um, yeah. And my wife is home, so we're gonna wrap this shit up. We'll have the poll up online, and we'll catch you guys next week. <laughs>